What's up, my precious little pack, and welcome back once again to Vega Conflict for the next part of the continuation from the video yesterday, which was the support bridge, which I'm actually, I may rename it to the droid bridge because all of the support class ships will all be robotic in nature, and they will not actually have crews on board because they're going to be too small for a crew. First off, they're effectively just a duplication of all the ships we already have in the game. They're just scaled down. And this is where I the point where I said you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. This idea is actually meant for lower level players and not for us high levels. For any of us that already have the ships, researching these ships would be a useless waste of time. Unless you're just looking to add a few more ships to your fleet and things like that. First off... Every single vessel you research under the support bridge will have a support class ship modifier tag. And only technology researched from the support bridge can be equipped onto that ship. In other words, it has to have a modifier tag of its own. So to go onto a support class ship, you it would have to have a support class ship tag on it as well so the modifier would actually be quite visible so under the restricted page for each one it would say support class ship so you cannot equip these weapons on any other ship class aside from the support class and to further restrict them they will actually be equipped only to certain ships now before you ask what are the ships they're actually, as I said, standard ships. So in this case, we're going to use the Bastion as an example. I've taken and I've, re I've produced stats for it. Now, first off, the name of the ship will actually be Support or Droid Bastion Cruiser. And under the Modifier tab, where it shows all this stuff, it'll be reduced by half. Everything will be reduced by 50% and the ship will be reduced by 50% size in combat so it'll be a smaller harder to hit vessel but it will also lack overall durability this is meant just for low level players to be able to play with high level content at the lower tier but in small numbers and that's what the restriction on the number of slots you had available in support class ships because only support class ships can be put into the support slots in the fleets second everything on them is reduced except for their speed and range I want them to have the same style of play as their standard counterparts in this case the Bastion compared to the droid Bastion they would be the exact same the difference is it would have half the repair time half the health half the weight though half the cargo it would have the same speed overall it wouldn't have reduced range here it would have the exact same it would be basically a duplicate just smaller However, all of its resistances, its damage, its overdrive, all of it would be nerfed in half, and this is just for lower tier players to play with. So you'd have a Firestorm Overdrive that lasts 4 seconds, like it normally does. It would, however, only boost the damage by 50, 150%. It would only give you a 10% increase in range. And yes, I know nerfing this wasn't actually a good idea, but I figured it's an overdrive anyways just chop the range a little bit more so that you'll know you'll want to use the original bastion over this one and it has 20 percent shield bypass well an increase of 20 percent shield bypass and i've taken the time to calculate everything for what the droid bastion cruisers look like i've had, i actually have it pulled up in the background here let me just all right you guys are staring at the tab over on the right of the screen I'm actually looking at a page right now support support or droid bastion stats repair time 37 minutes 49 seconds health 4537 maximum mass 9214 tons cargo 1,131,150 tons ship speed they're all the exact same there 320 meters per second turning 20 degrees per second strafe 150 meters per second sector speed 270 astronomical units per hour and the modifiers tab let me just quickly switch over for all of you in here let's open up the firestorm overdrive first because that will be the first one talked about firestorm overdrive dps boost 150 percent 
Range, 10% increase. Shield bypass, 20% increase. Lasts for 4 seconds. Alright. Cutter damage, plus 5%. Alien resistance, 25%. Plasma resistance, 20%. Counter chain, it still has one because I want to keep at least that on there. Because these ships, as I will explain later, have a very strong negative impact on how they are used. One, the next part, applies to cannon, maximum range, plus 1,000 meters. Final tag, under where everything else would be in the bottom corner, it will say support class ship. That way it can be put in the support ship class um, slot under your fleet. However, again, you only get two of these slots, and these ships are greatly, greatly nerfed. Next up, let's take a look at the Epsilon Cannon and compare it to its counterpart, the standard Epsilon Cannon. And first thing that you're going to know, you do not get to research multiple levels of any of these weapons. I have taken every single piece of technology and based it off the lowest level, so even at their strongest, these little ships will, will pale in comparison to their heavier counterparts, as you're about to see. First off, support or droid Epsilon Echo Cannon stats. Energy damage per second, 124. Energy maximum chain damage per second, 323. Mass, 875 tons. Range, 0 to 3,000 meters. Speed, 3,000 meters per second. Chain, 5. Module damage, minus 50%. Restricted to cruiser, Altarian, support class ship. Again, there's the thing. They, these new ships, these tiny ships, they'll still classify as the standard version. However, they'll just be support class and they'll be a droid. And when you select them in combat, they will not play an audio cue. So you won't hear a ship, say, cruiser here or anything like that. There will be no response at all because they're controlled from the bridge and they have no response because they are robotic in nature. Next up, let's take a look at the resonant armor for them. Again, all technology stems off of the lowest level and it's reduced by half. Support or droid resonant armor stats. Repair, 15 minutes, 8 seconds. Mass, 584 tons. Health, 2044. Shield, energy, an increase of 10%. Restricted to Altarian. Support class ship. Again, support class so it can only be equipped on support class ships. And the Altarian tag so it can only be equipped on support bastion, support sovereign, support whatever one there that you're using. Next up. Spectral shell. And each these are all just examples because every single thing in here that's a blueprint you can unlock would be well, for high tier gameplay, or mid tier, I was thinking convert everything into a researchable blueprint, but have it so it's a beta version, or a droid version, which would fall under the support classification. And each research, what I thought was, each one, you should be able to research everything for an entire ship and get a ship started in the same day. Now, let's take Spectral Shell 1, because here's the next example the support or droid spectral shell stats. Repair time, 11 minutes, 21 seconds. Energy reduction, 75%. Other reductions, 25%. Mass, 389 tons. Energy, 1,361. Defense, 90%. Counter chain, 1. Restricted to Altarian support class ship. The reason I love the resistances and the energy reduction the same as dev lowering them is because I want you to have the overall feel of playing an Altarian ship just much, much, much more weak. The objective of the support ships is to give lower or mid-level players the experience of being able to play with high-tier ships before they actually have them and to help them out a little bit. Remember, the resistances on the ship itself are greatly weakened, so you can't just say, well, you're going to research the Overdrive Bastion and then go gun ho because not only will its overall health be reduced 
I'm about to talk about the reduction in its overall ability to fight. But now let's quickly cover special in game real quick. This is the one that nobody's gonna like, but I find it the most hilarious. Sport or Droid Class Zafer Thruster. Shield energy minus 5%, ship speed plus 50 meters per second, turning plus 3 degrees per second, restricted to Altarian and support class ships. Alright, that covers all the stats for what I came up with. Literally everything is reduced by half except for range and speed. They want to have the overall speed the same, but just be smaller variants that are weaker and when they are fighting their actual counterpart, so a Bastion support against a Bastion standard would lose. It would be slower, it would be weaker, it would be just overall you'd want the standard version. But this is for lower level players to be able to play around with and experience these ships whilst not changing how they actually play so when you actually get it you won't be confused about how it plays. This is just meant to be fun. Now this would cover every ship, so everything in here would be a researchable ship, so you wouldn't have to worry about picking up the Rapture Frigate or anything, uh, the Rapture Cruiser or the Osprey Frigate. Primarily because you'd be able to research a little tiny version of it. Well, each one, the size would be scaled down by half. Now, let's talk about the drawback of the ships, the support class ships. They will not have markup grades. So, to even further the distance between them and their already powerful counterparts, they will have no primary advantage, and standard ships will be able to be mark upgraded. The only advantage they have is just being of their tier. And in this case, all of them would not have a tier because all of them would be classed only by their name. So from Demon Core and up, each one would be classified, and yes, the weapons that can only be equipped on certain ships would still only be equipable on certain ships. This, however, doesn't mean that everything would be bad. There would be one advantage to having these little ships around. That is that everything would be a blueprint for them so you can produce as many as you want, including Sovereign Carrier, or the Support or Droid Class Sovereign Carrier, which would be smaller and weaker than its counterpart, However, this is where the real kick comes in. However, it would all be blueprint items. You take the lowest level reusable item, reduce all of its damage in half, stuff like that, make sure that everything's scaled down, but its range stays the same. So it still has the same playstyle, but is greatly weakened. Again, difference is the little sovereign carrier blueprint will have blueprint weapons as well, researchable via the support bridge. And again, this idea, idea just stems off of shrinking down the ships we already have by 50%, modifying all their stats so that they're half of what they are except for movement speed, because I want you to all have the experience of playing with high tier content without actually playing with high tier content. Because when you actually step up against high tier content with little support vessels, you will lose. You will shoot at a Bastion that is fully mark upgraded with a support or droid Bastion and you will lose because you will hit its shield and do next to nothing. It will shoot you and it will decimate your shield. And now, that's about all I wanted to talk about was just what that idea was. And all it does is stems off of ships we already have just being shrunk down and being more available to everyone. So everyone has a chance to play test things. And this also opens up a new aspect of the game, which is testing. Live testing. If you do not want to devote your time for your ship factory to produce an actual ship that you're curious about or don't know how it will function, you can produce a support class variant of it that will be weaker and see how it does in combat. The only thing you'll lose is damage per second, so if it functions the way you want it to, it will operate at a very good capacity. This will allow players to test everything. Now, going on to how you build the ships, since everything is being reduced in half, 
even the build time would be reduced in half. So you can actually produce them, play test them ahead of time. So if you say, well, you want to build this one to try and test it, and things like that. Oh, the other thing about every single one of those ships, they will have no resistors. So only the resistance built into the ship hull will function. As well as resistance to whatever is provided by the sh fleet. So in the future, if we wind up getting support fleets, you'll be able to take them in. However, carrier classification will still work as it normally does. You cannot take in a support carrier with a standard carrier. You can only have one carrier no matter what. However, you can take in a support carrier that's been researched as lo uh, along with its researchable overdrive, its generator, whatever it is, but again, everything will be weakened. So in this case, how do you weaken a carrier with its support field? You can't really weaken it, but you can, however, slash everything that's equipped onto it. What I'm trying to say is, basically, let's just take the Midgard and use it as an example for what I'm going to talk about here. How would a support Midgard carrier class function if it can't be put in the same group as a Midgard carrier. Well, all this would be reduced in half the cargo. Speed would still be the same, support range, agility field would still be the same, except for its maximum mass would be greatly reduced, its health would be reduced, its repair time would be reduced, and its range modifier may actually be removed for this new classification. But remember, it's just a weaker variant there that there's not supposed to be any spe anything special about them. Or, you may use support carriers with standard carriers, but all support carriers will lose their support field. I.e., they will not be able to project a field to assist their fleet, or they will have a modified um, support field specifically to add combat abilities to your fleet such as increased damage, increased speed in certain scenarios, increased range, or they could be debuff fleets and they could carry a support field that only affects your enemy fleet so it could reduce their movement speed, reduce their damage, reduce their shield bypass, or any number of things like that. Again, this idea just stems off the idea of making everything in the game researchable, but making it a very, very weak variant. But this also opens up, as I said, the ability for people to playtest. So they can decide if they want to try and build something full scale at full build time, and if it works out or doesn't work out. But it all just depends. What would all of you think of that if every time a new ship was released, if it was added to the support bridge's researchable menu, along with the basic weapon that it comes with as a researchable blueprint, but very, very weak, so we can all playtest it, but we cannot have the true version of it without fighting for it. It will also give you a glimpse into all the ships. You can also bring up potential builds and things like that. And something else I forgot to mention yesterday when I was talking about support fleets. They would be in a slot. When you open it up, you'd have a second tab up here, and it would show a little additional ship, similar to the ship build icon over down here. But instead of it showing a plus, it would show an arrow. Now, under that arrow, you click it, and it would bring you to the secondary tab, and you'd have two squares just like these, and there'd be one here and one here and they would be support class and when you put one in and when you put a support ship in the fleet it will effectively just change how the fleet functions first off you'll have your standard deployment formation still so this will be your main group they'll be the group that is deployed closest to the enemy your support vessels will be deployed in a little group right behind them and you'll be able to have access to three formations researchable via the support bridge as well called your support formations and they will come in three varieties you will have rear guard which will have the two of them under this formation you'd have them right here and right here right behind the carrier spaced guard they would actually be out here and out here and line formation would just have one here one here and it's to change how however deployment works and remember 
support ships would be repaired at your support bridge so you won't have to worry about the damage but remember they will be weakened variants of their standard counterpart so they may help you advance at the low tier but in high tier combat they will be almost useless unless you use them carefully because their damage is greatly reduced their overall usability let actually let me just compare it let's see I have one bastion with all energy weapons level 2 a little tiny support bastion would have around two and a half hours repair time due to its armor shielding and all of that and it wouldn't be allowed to be mark upgraded so you wouldn't be able to add resistors to it or anything like that this tab wouldn't even be available to it you would only have your standard resistances and second it would only have about 448 damage per second because remember I said it would be 124 damage per second per weapon you can only equip four actually it's more like it's almost around 500 damage per second which pales in comparison to this at over 1240 and the health shielding everything like that is just superior the objective is simply to allow lower tier players to enjoy a little bit of high tier gameplay but on a much 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 more micro scale but also allow players as I said to test builds so if you're afraid of actually devoting your build time of your factory your ship factory produce a support variant of it try it out and see how you think it'll function test it out alone in low level combat well you can't launch it alone because support fleets you can't launch it launch an only support fleet you have to have at least one ship in your standard primary group and this will be referred to as the primary group under this menu and then you click through to the secondary where you have your support tab and remember to begin with at level one and level two of your support bridge you only have one support slot you only get that second one at level three and i never actually explained the requirements for the bridge so i'm gonna go ahead and talk about that now to be able to unlock the bridge the support bridge level one your bridge itself the bridge has to be a minimum of level five then at level 7 you'll gain access to the second upgrade and then at level 8 you'll gain access to the third upgrade of the support bridge this is to make it so it's limited so that not everybody can just instantaneously grab the bridge and start researching high tier researchable small t uh, small scale content no 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 it's meant to be worked for but it's meant to be a fun addition and how the bridge is upgraded is one day per level so to build it it will take one day at level one to upgrade it to level two it will take two days to upgrade to level three it will take three days it will take you a total of six days to build and completely upgrade this ship well the ship factory slash bridge or it can be this other way it would still take the same build time and everything like that it would be essentially just a secondary bridge with a sh uh, support factory built in and research is a bit more straightforward it, as I said in the previous video it works the same way current research does and I would let Kixi actually scale the research of all of these support class or droid class ships so that everything is scaled down and second, like I said, the build time of these ships would be faster so you could build readiness production tests. Now, I always call these ships readiness production tests because they're my first line of a certain run, which I improve upon later on. So you could produce these micro ship scales just to test and play test or just to have a bit of fun. I also think that this would be a great addition in PvP because, again, it would open up a little bit more strategy because you'd have technically two more ships that if you play carefully with the two of them they could be the equivalent of one ship well not quite because even the highest damage per second support bastion would still pale in comparison to the standard counterpart at over 1240 damage per second even if you had two of them the two combined would still have under 1000 damage per second and this bad boy he gets resistors he gets heavy armor slots he gets heavy everything in comparison to the little 9,120 ton ships. But 
that's it for the idea. The idea is simply just to take ships we already have, scale them down, scale their build time down, basically everything, and make it so that any blueprint item, any reusable item, and any rare item is all a researchable blueprint that is extremely weak in comparison to the standard version by reducing it by 50%. So everybody has a, tans a chance, <laughs> a chance, a chance to play test these little ships. But it would also give a little bit more entertainment and variety in lower tier combat because right now, I hate to say it, but it's still all about tyrants. Granted, all you'd get researchable void weapons, researchable void ships, and stuff like that because you'd have the support void, uh, support, the support, yeah. <laughs> you would have the support marauder class they would still pair in comparison to the standard counterpart however you would have little tyrants of your own so everybody would have access to those little demon ships along with a researchable variant of scourge fuel and stuff like that this is only for the support class however again they will not have insane everything again the support class will lose resistance they will be weaker than the standard counterpart and they will not get resistant armor of any type because they are not meant to be re resistant to damage unless it is built into the ship hull and even that is greatly reduced this is meant just to be an addition to more or less play test build stuff and mess around with so you know if you don't want to build a sovereign carrier because you're afraid of building something well you'll have access to researchable drones but only for the support carrier Okay, now I'm going to ask all of you a few questions. I want you to go ahead and just take a couple moments to answer. One, would you rather have the support class carriers actually usable with a standard carrier but lose their support field or generator or overdrive completely so they act as just a blank carrier with no support field but have multiple carriers in combat for use of any number of reasons? Or would you rather have any number of other things. Do you think that the carrier should have a support field but it doesn't affect your primary fleet and only affects support ships so you know if you have one carrier you get one support ship so you, it kind of boosts it a little bit further and the support ships are only affected by the primary carrier but the secondary carrier can't affect the primary or any of the primary ships. The other point is if a feature like this ever did come out how would you use it? Would you use it for improving your PvP quality of the game? Would you do any number of things to improve how you play the game? Would you build high tier ships at a low tier player after you get bridge level 5 just so you can help yourself advance? And if so, would you say that the progression via this system would help you if you had access to bastions and their technology at let's say level 40 or 50 compared to me at level 65 or above. Do you think this would help you advance? Do you think this would help you balance PvP a bit so you could actually take miniaturized ships in to defend yourself against those full-scale ships? Now, I'm not saying these would be amazing because even a fully fitted support bastion with its little shielding, it would only have around 4,500 effective shielding Actually, no, it wouldn't even have that because it only has the one level shield. It would only have about 2,500 to 3,000 effective shielding with 75% reduction to damage against energy. So it would be weaker than even your metaphase shields. So this really would be just a support class vessel because of how weak and small they would be. Their advantage would be in repair time, though. All right. Do you think you would build any of these ships based on their repair time? Because they would take a lot less repair time than their equivalent tiered counterpart. However, they wouldn't provide the same battle experience. They wouldn't be able to fight as high level targets. They'd allow you to fight higher level targets, just not all that powerful. Another thing that I just thought of, how would you like the research to be unlocked? Would you like it to go tier for tier? So when you first build the bridge, you have access to tier 4, 4.5, 5, and 5.5 and ships. And at, uh, at level 2 for the support bridge, would you want it to have access to all tier 6 and 6.5 and ships? And at level 3, would you want to have access to tier 7 and above ships? 
as well as their technology, so it researches each of these micro variants of the ships, as well as technology. And do you think that the idea is good the way I set it up? Or do you think that there should be multiple levels of the technology, but make them a lot weaker than what I suggested even now, so that standard ships can beat the ever-loving snot out of these new ships, so people can actually enjoy low-tier combat with high-tier ships, just not actual high-tier ships? Alright, that's going to be it, everybody. I've asked most of the questions I wanted to. Any additional ones I'll either add in the description of the video or pin in the comment. But go ahead and state your thoughts on what I've just talked about. If you have any interest in actually supporting this idea, let me know, because if it gets enough support and enough backing, we'll see what we can do about taking it over to the forum, talking with CM Lee, and see if we can get it to pass over to the development team to see if they would consider doing it just as a entertainment or a test production facility for players to enjoy the game just a little bit more because there's a limited number of us and eventually they will start to listen to us because I mean come on we're we're the, we're your remaining players eventually you will want to listen to us just because it'll help you earn more money oh and the fact that I earlier I said that you could set all of the researchable technology on your own time scale you can make it so it take 10 days, which is $50, to research Tier 7 microtechnology. And all of this is meant as like a coin boost for Kickside, but also something fun for the players because in PvP it would be fun to have micro PvP ships and have a standard ship in with them and just fight in lower levels, earn decent intel, and then just sit back. But now. Now that I've truly stated everything I want to say, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section. Leave a like on the video if you like the idea. Share the video if you want to see it spread around. And as always, everybody, I'll see you later.